You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. So without further ado, we bring to you straight from Canada, and it's cold up there too, Robert Mayette, also known as Kurgan the Interrogator. Sir, how are you tonight? Very well, very well. How are you? I cannot complain. I've already complained about the cold, so I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cold. It's like minus four here. So <sighs> it's, uh, Brutal it's stuff. It is. Brutal stuff. Uh, so before we get started, I guess I want to kind of get your background, but I, really before professional wrestling, what was your passions? I mean, did, were you involved in sports? What did you like as a young interrogator? <laughs> <laughs> what was life well, like in Canada at a young age for you? Well, well, um, I started, I mean, of course, it's, it's hockey country, too, so I, I did Absolutely. try hockey. I did try hockey, but I didn't, I wasn't really good at it. You know, I kept hit, I couldn't break, I couldn't, I kept hitting the boards, and I was pretty awkward. So, uh, but, uh, I even ice skated on, on the, uh, frozen ice as well, you know. But, uh, I, uh, I played a lot of volleyball. I was in the volleyball, in the high school, a volleyball team, so, so that, that, that I could play and wasn't that as expensive as hockey as well. No, very true. <laughs> In the, and the skates, I had big feet that at the time too. So it was hard for my parents to find some decent skates, you know, that could fit me. And some of them would, would have been pretty expensive at the time. Did you have to have your special time. ordered for size? I had to have special ordered. Actually, this is uh, no, this is how old I am. This is before internet and all that stuff. When I was a teen, uh, my parents had to order it uh, outside the province and sometimes outside the country, and it's even sometimes in the states and for shoes and stuff. The skates, I could find a pair of skates here if I remember, in, my, in, my, in the you know, near the big city where I live. But, uh, it was, it, it was painful wearing those skates because, uh, you know, I had large feet, so, you know, skates didn't really, uh, didn't stretch. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was painful for a while. <laughs> but on I the side, fun with it. on the side, I actually write for a pro hockey, uh, Website, so uh, I'm a big hockey fan as well. So, who do you call your favorite team? You know, I don't. In the area here, it's a lot of uh, my Montreal Canadiens. There's pretty uh, a lot of fans here, right? And uh, and Toronto and Boston as well. And uh, I grew up when I was a team, mostly when the Islanders, you know, the, New York, New York, the New York Islanders, were, when they were winning cups back to back. Yeah, when Mike Bossy was playing for him, right? Uh, well, they had some great players, Mike Bossy, Cartier, and you know, it's, uh, it's a great team, and it was fun to watch. It was always, you know, especially at the playoff times or the, or the you know, the Cup finals. And so, of course, that's been when I was a kid. Now, I guess I do, I do. You know, I do dig the Montreal. I mean, my dad was a fan of Montreal when I so when I was a kid watching Montreal with him, the, the games with him, stuff like that. You know, so I am when Montreal does well, and you know, it's, I, I'm interested. And any Canadian team that goes far, further in the playoffs, you know, we don't have a lot of Canadian teams actually, <laughs> but uh, uh, I do try to support them. So it's always, it's always good to see a team from Canada to try to do, you know, big. But I am, I, I, I do like Montreal for sure. You know, I do Very like cool. Follow. But I'm not a, I'm not a huge follower. I'm not, I'm not a fanatic about it at all. You know, but uh, once in a while, you know, if I want to watch a game, I'm, you know, it's, it's, you know, I can't. You know, it's, I, I like watching a lot. Especially a live, a live game is always fun too. So it's fun. There's something about seeing it in person than watching it on television. It's it just a completely different environment, isn't it? It is. I mean, that goes for, for for wrestling as well. For wrestling, you know, right. TV and live is completely different, right? So, absolutely, read anything about it. So, Robert, when you were growing up, were you always tall for your age, or did you just grow into size at <coughs> a certain uh, I, year? You just sprouted, or how'd that work out for I, you? I was always tall. I was always tall since I was born, really. And, really? Uh, oh yeah, I was. I just I just stuck out a bit. Uh, so yeah, I was always tall since I was in the first grade, taller than my first grade teacher, you know, so I knew it was a little different. And, uh, I was tall and lanky, I was, you know, skinny, but I was big bone, but, you know, it's just a little awkward. And especially when you're taller than all the classmates and even the other classes, the, the other grades, <laughs> I was taller than the other kids. Uh, you know, it made me a little, uh, conscience about it as well, self-conscience and a little bit, I was kind of a shy kid as well. 
So right. kids, kids, kids could be looking at me and teasing me or, you know, always get stared at every time I go in the public area or something like a restaurant or, or, or you know, in the cafeteria of, at school or something. So it was, you know, they didn't really, you know, being tall didn't really help me when I was a kid for sure, you know, but, uh, but I think wrestling being, I think the, the whole reason why I did become a wrestler is, is because it helped me to just be comfortable with myself in front of a public. Sure. Not to be a spy, you know, to be, so that's one of the appeals why I got involved in it, I guess. Well, I understand guy. you've liked wrestling ever since you were a youth. What got you in, involved in the, in the interest in professional wrestling in the first place? Well, like, they started when you were a fan, right? So, uh, I, uh, there was a local wrestling called the Grand Prix Wrestling in the Maritimes in the East, Coast, uh, the East part of Canada. It's, you know, every territory in the, in the early 80s, the 70s and the early 80s was big. Every territory was hot, really, in, in all parts of Canada, even the U.S. too, before, uh, before WWF took over and kind of monopolized the whole thing about all the wrestlers. But, uh, it was, it was sold out arenas, the local arenas everywhere throughout the, the, my area. So it was, it was hot, you know, they had TV every Saturday. And, uh, I used to watch it all the time, uh, never knowing I wanted to be a wrestler, but I was a, you know, big fan of it. I used to watch it with my dad. And, and I think by when I was a teen, like in 16, I was 16, the first time I watched, well, started to watch the WWF. When Hogan was on top and Macho, you know, the, the golden age of wrestling in the 80s, really. Right. And that's where, that's where it blew me away, you know, and, uh, and for some reason, I don't know why it got in my head that I could be, I wanted to be one. Because I was tall and it's not great. At the time, big guys had, I had more chances to make it as a wrestler, you know, at the time. And, uh, and uh so yeah, I decided to to be one. I wanted to be one. So I, I kept asking local guys with the local wrestlers in the area and trying to talk to them and see if they could uh you know, have a time for me to time for them to train me, really. And uh and I, and so i I mean this is over this is over the years, a couple of years, really. And I went to the local promoter, local wrestlers, you know, to get their interest, you know, I wanted to you know, it known really, you know, because I wanted to be trained as a wrestler, and uh, and this was one guy, the local wrestler called uh, Big Stephen Pedapal, and uh, and I was following his career in the area, and uh, the uh, the local wrestler followed his career since I was a kid, and uh, I just went to him when he was playing hockey in the winter, you know, just near, near my hometown, and I asked him if he could train me. He was interested, but didn't have time, you know. The, that winter, but uh, a few months later, he called me up and uh, asked me if I was still interested to become be, to be trained as a as a pro wrestler. And, and of course, I said yes. And uh, so I started wrestling uh, in the local territory, and that and, that, and that's where I figured I, I thought it was I thought it was going to be easy to get in or to make it as a wrestler, you know. Of course, but it's not. It's kind <laughs> of how hard it is. It's, it's tough, you know. It, you have to know the psychology and skills to, you know, understand the crowd and all that stuff and uh, the whole, you know, to, to know how to work as a wrestler, really. And uh, so that was a learning lesson. I mean, I had some good guys with me, though. You know, Leo Burke is one of the great minds of wrestling in Canada, you know, and, uh, and so he helped me. And of course, my, my mentor helped me, too, Stephen Pettipal, and, uh, and guys like... Uh, 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 Rip Rogers. You know, if you heard of Rip Rogers, we just talked to him a couple weeks ago. As a matter of fact, from Indiana, isn't he? He's, he's right from, from Indianapolis. Indiana. Absolutely. That's right. Now he's when I started, he was there. He was a cha- he was a champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, t- uh, he's, I wrestled. I worked with him <laughs> every, almost every night. I think he hated me because I was so stiff with him. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a I great guy. He, 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 he liked it. He likes stiff wrestlers, according to him. So I think he might have got a, got a jolly out of it, actually. Well, his tops, it's my first match, yeah, all of the, my, my first match was in my hometown. And the end of the match, I had a big brawl. And they tied, the, the bag, you know, they, they tied me up, all the bad guys kind of, uh, uh, tied my back, my, my arms behind my back, and he came over and ch- chopped the hell out of me. He's known for his chops <laughs> and, uh, in the chest. And, uh, blood came out. And I was so happy. Blood, I was so proud. I kept showing off to my, my family, my friends the next day. So, you know, <laughs> my chest was scarred from Brett Rogers, uh, tampering. 
But I paid him back, though, and he, he hated my job. He tried to avoid it, actually. But, I mean, he was a great guy. He was a great worker, you know, great psychology. I mean, he was one of the best. So, I mean, having him on the tour was great. You know, I learned a lot from him. Incredibly underrated, that's for sure. <laughs> for sure. 